Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for another one of our mask making sessions and obviously if you've um, watched recently, we are now doing revisits. So we're week 104, which is like a revisit of week number four. Um, so we are making the policy envelope, um, you know, like coin envelope, policy envelope things. So if you wanted to join in and make some, what you're going to need is obviously some paper. Again, I would recommend something kind of double-sided because you're going to see the underside, if that makes sense. So if you haven't got double-sided, maybe like coffee dyed or um, just kind of ink it up, you know, before you kind of glue it all together. Just just the end. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, you know, just so you don't have stark white. You're going to need some circles. So I've punched out a whole bunch of like one inch circles to use as my, you know, wind closure. And I've got some brads that I like to use for my, you know, my circles. Um, I've seen other people or, you know, I mean, I've myself used uh, eyelets before. Personally, I just get on better with brads. So it's up to you. You could use brads, you could use eyelets. Personally, I just, you know, favour brads really as, you know, for ease of use really. I've got my bone folder, obviously. And, oops, I've got glue. So those are the kind of bare materials that you're going to need. Obviously, if you want to decorate them, you know, you may want to have some nice things to decorate with. Um, maybe a corner rounder. If you're going to round your corners of your uh, flaps. Hmm, trying to think what else. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, pretty much it. So I'm going to move these brads, actually. I'm going to just put them in the jar with the circles so they don't get just lost all over the desk. Okay, so I've got a variety of 12 by 12 papers and, you know, um, my normal kind of A4 printables. And we'll just get kind of making. So let's just take, for instance, this one here. <clears throat> I love these um, policy envelope type things. And, yeah, I mean, I used to really, really find them very tricky to make <laughs> I'm saying it now and now I'm thinking oh I'm going to find this one tricky just because it's positioning where you want the paper now personally I like the um fold if you see what I mean to be in the center so it's kind of visible I'm not saying that that's how everybody likes them but yeah that's how I quite like to do them so this one here I know this is a really nice pattern on the back but I had printed this by mistake, you know, when you do the double sided and it prints upside down. So that's why I'm not too fussed, you know, about using that. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to use this, this as my side, you know, that's going to be for the policy envelope. So what I like to do is fold in here like this and then get my other side and kind of fold it in to meet it approximately you know somewhere in the middle ish so squish that down like that and then I'm just going to cut it along here like that okay and then that's my piece that's going to glue down now obviously this is very tall at the moment, so we're going to trim it down. So again, you might want to just kind of decide how you want your um, you know, piece to be. I mean, let me just check that I wouldn't prefer it this side. Oh, actually that side's quite nice too, isn't it? Oh, it's a bit of a tough choice now. Yeah, I was kind of completely sold on I wanted it this side, but actually, I think I might prefer this side now. Sorry, I've done a complete U-turn. And yeah, change sides now. So, so I'm going to have it this side. So all I like to do is obviously trim down my corners down here. This is just to make my fold at the bottom. So this is very much like the uh, coin envelopes that we did a couple of weeks ago. So we're just kind of making this bit into a little flap that we can fold up at the bottom. Okay like that and then we can just bring our bottom bit up and like I say I quite like this look for these you know these particular policy envelopes I like this look where I've got the bits all you know folded up so you know it's just up to you really how you like to do it I think they look quite cool with the folds 
you know, show him. But I mean, if you don't, then this would be fine too. And then what you want to do is gauge where you want your flap. So I'm kind of thinking, yeah, maybe like about here. So all I'm going to do is just fold it down like that. Okay. And then, of course, what I want to do is then take these pieces off. So again, I like to put sort of a bit of a curve there like that not too much but just a bit because you don't want it right let me show you so that's where the fold is and then we've got a gap of just a few millimeters to make it easy to get your things in I've done these in the past where you know my fold has been up here and then of course it's very difficult to actually get your fingers in to be able to put it you know get things in and out and then what you could do is if you're, you know, particularly fussed about your pieces being the same size on your like envelope flap, you can kind of just curve it round now and then take this and, you know, chop that down. Like, oops, like that. Not quite like that, but, you know, some something along those lines, let's just say. Oops. <coughs> Oh my goodness, what a, what a messy crafter I am. Okay, so I did not make a very good job of that. Okay, well, I will just go in and tidy mine up a bit now because obviously I have not made a very good job. Okay, and then let's just get rid of those little bits and pieces. So all you're going to want to do now is assemble your, your piece like that and then you've got your flap that comes down there. So... Let's just glue it in and perhaps I will, perhaps I will glue this in, perhaps I, yeah, perhaps I should glue it in. So again, just going to run the glue straight along here, this edge, and then I'm going to run it along this edge here. And then I like to run a bit along here as well, if you see what I mean. So is that if there's a big overlap on these two pieces, you've kind of got glue on the outer and the inner edge. I hope that makes sense. It's not even making sense as I'm saying it, but hopefully it makes a bit more sense to you guys than it's making to me. Like that. Okay. And then, you know, I mean, I've not made a brilliant job of this, so you can just kind of then straighten your flap out as you, as you need to. And then of course for your closures, oops, Okay, for your closures, now I've kind of improved my technique because when I first started making these, I was trying to put my brad in through here, directly through here, which of course is very difficult to get to. So now I've become super lazy and all I do is double up my circles to put my brad through, if you see what I mean. It's a lot, lot easier because you're not having to, you know, try and get your brad in there or before gluing, which I always found very, very tricky. So yeah, personally, I find it much, much easier to just use two circles. So let me just kind of show you what I mean because this might not be very clear what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to ink them up a bit. Like that. And the reason that we're having two circles is so you've got something for your string to slot in against, if that makes sense. So we're going to put the hole in here. And again, you know, I just kind of eyeball this and poke it through with just my little pokey tool here. <clears throat> and then you're going to put your brad through. Okie doke, like that. Squish that down. So basically what you've got, you've got your bottom circle, which then you can glue that onto your piece and then you've still got your top circle that your string can get in between. Whereas previously I kind of just had one circle, it wasn't glued onto the piece at all, the brad was the fixer, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I just personally find this a lot easier, but obviously it's completely and utterly up to you, you know, what you find kind of easiest or works best for you. 
And then for the top one, you can do exactly the same, i.e., you know, the two circles, or you could just have your brad going right through the circle and the piece. Again, you know, depending on, yeah, how you like it. I mean, the bonus of having the two circles, you don't then have a brad poking through underneath. Personally, you know, I don't really mind the brad poking through. I think it's okay. It's, you know, it's not really a big deal. They're not kind of really unsightly or anything like that. But, you know, just work it sort of depending on how you like them best, really. Um, but definitely, definitely, this, I think, is, you know, a very easy method to use using the two circles. So that's definitely my, you know, my top tip is use the two circles. It's kind of very, very easy then. So again, just going to then glue my pieces down. <clears throat> and I'm just going to use my hot glue. And I know I say it all the time, but I mean, I'm just using my hot glue because obviously when you're doing a video, you want to make sure your pieces are glued pretty quickly. And, you know, the hot glue just enables me to do that. I don't have to keep checking, oh, has it glued? Has it, you know, has it not? So like that. And then obviously my other circle. Now, again, you can vary where you want it. You know, sometimes you might want to have your circles very, very close. Sometimes you might want them kind of halfway, you know, completely and utterly up to you. So I'm going to put this one quite close. Like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to get some twine actually for this one. So, oops. yeah, that was the thing I forgot to say. You will want some twine or string or whatever it is that you're going to use, um, you know, to be your closure. So that's another little thing that you will need. So again, up to you, <clears throat> up to you if you go kind of top to bottom. I, for some reason, just tend to go, you know, round the top one first. I don't know whether that's how they're meant to be, but that's just kind of force of habit, really, that I do that. And then I just knot mine. I do like a double knot. I, you know, going like under the second time, so it's like the reverse, if you see what I mean, because that will then stay knotted nicely like that and then you can just get in slightly cut your string like that and then you can obviously wrap this round your other circle so hopefully that's making sense now about the two circles so you can then go in between the circles oops like that that then acts as your closure Okay, and then just trim my my string off. And that's it. Okay, so I'll just talk you through that one more time. Obviously, you know, not really too complicated. They're fiddly. You know, that's the kind of main thing there is I just think they're a little bit on the fiddly side. So let's do another one. Uh, oh, and that paper I think is my... Butterfly Beauties, if I recall. Okay, so let's do this one. This is my pink Parisian paper. So again, just need to decide which way round I would like to have it. Perhaps we will have her. Yeah, perhaps we'll have her there. Let's hope I don't actually cut her, <clears throat> cut her off when I come to actually do this. But and again, just take that over like that. Okay. Again, I mean, I don't measure. I just literally, you know, eyeball it as to how how big I want it to be. So, you know, again, it's up to you. If you like yours very ordered, you know, in a particular size, you may want to measure yours. You know, personally, I'm not not really fussed. I I think they're nice. You know, however however they turn out, to be honest. Okay. So then we're just going to again trim those little corners off like that and then just trim down here and in this side as well okay and then we're going to fold that bottom bit up like that
Okay, and then we're going to just gauge where we roughly want our fold to be. So maybe about here on this one. I mean, you know, you're looking for basically, I think, having these kind of slightly rectangular, not not like huge rectangles, although there's no reason why they couldn't be. Um, but, you know, just slightly, slightly rectangular. And then again, what we do is we just trim down here, slightly curved, just so you've got that manoeuvre room to be able to get your pieces in and out easily so again just kind of like going round like that and then what we'll do is open it out and then just sort of bend it round so you've got your pieces in fact I'll do it this way because it seems to naturally want to go that way and then you can kind of do your flap you know and you can kind of have your flap how you want I mean like I said if you wanted to just square them off and then just round your corners with your corner rounder you could do it that way um, you know mine as you can see I'm not making a very good job of but you can just tidy it up slightly like this I mean to be honest yeah I've uh, not made a very good job of that one either but you know they're fine they're absolutely fine like that Okay, and then we're going to have our little flat there. So let's just, again, glue. And like I said, I try and run glue down on the inside edge, like where it's gluing, and then here on like the outside edge. That way, just if you've got like a big flap, it's going to, you know, hold in both places. And then I just obviously, you know, run some glue down my flap there. And then we just glue the whole thing like that. Whoops. Sorry, I'm just throwing everything around here today. Um, and then just obviously press down like that. And up there. Okay, and press that down. And just trim this side down slightly like that. So super, super pretty. And there's my little flap then. And then I'm going to just get my couple of circles. So, I mean, you're actually using four because you need obviously two for the the body part of the envelope and then two for the flap. So there. I always like to use these buff coloured ones. I love the buff coloured envelopes and I know I've said this before, but I tend to buy those um, card making packs in this buff colour. So I can't remember ever whether you get 50 or 25. Um but however many you get, obviously you get the cards and you get the envelopes. So, you know, any offcuts of cards when I come to use them, I just punch out circles because, you know, then you've got tons and tons of them ready to use. And again, just put my brad straight through the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, just middle-ish. Because, yeah, I did the other one very far off the middle just now. Okay, so squish that down like that, and again, take this one. Just put that through the middle there. And like that, okay. So you've got your two circles for the top, two circles for the bottom, or you know, the middle. So I'm going to have a bit more gap on this one, just like that. So we're just going to hot glue. I mean, you can obviously use wet glue for this. Um, you know, you don't have to use the hot glue. Like I say, I'm doing it because obviously doing the video, it just makes it so quick and easy. I don't have to keep pressing it down, making sure it's glued, it is glued. Um, but I mean, obviously if you want to use the wet glue, that's fine too, or, or you know, whatever glue that it is you choose to use that you choose to use hmm. okay so that's those two and then again I'm just going to get my twine yeah I might as well use the brown as well there the brown this brown twine it just goes really really nicely with everything I find so yeah just tie that round there One and then a 
again, going under. I mean, I just do that so that my knot is really secure. Oops. She says. If I could actually even knot it in the first place. And then just trim that down. And then that's it. And then you can just wrap that round. Whoops. Like that. And, oops. Like that. I mean, I always do mine at this crossover. And um, weirdly enough, I bought some ready-made, uh, you know, policy envelopes the other day. And strangely, they weren't crossed over. They were just straight, straight up and down. But, you know, it's up to you, I suppose. You could do them straight or you could do them in this kind of like figure of eight. I like the figure of eight. I think it looks quite cute. But, yeah, up to you. So that's that one. So I probably don't need to really talk you through another one. Although the only thing that is worth mentioning, actually, just before I, you know, be quiet about what we're doing, you can, of course, alter them and make sort of tall ones. So should we do a tall one quickly? So this is my purple rain papers. And yeah, let's do a tall one from this, I think. Yeah. Uh, let me check which way round I want this. Um, we have it like that. Or do we want it on the purple side? Oh, let's have it on the purple side. So I'm just going to take it in like that. And then obviously like that. So, you know, you can make really quite tall ones. They don't have to be the sort of more stumpy ones that we've made so far. Okay. And then I think for my flap. Yeah, I want my flap up here. So I'm going to just cut it down probably about here. So it's not as tall as it is. Because, I mean, obviously at the moment it's ginormous. But just to give you an idea. So just cut our corners in. Oops. Oh dear, made a horrible job of that corner, didn't I? Okay, and then just cut in here. Again, just doing that sort of curve. And there. Oh my goodness, definitely, definitely need to have that flap over that one because my goodness, the mess I made of that. Oh gosh. Going to have to... Um, and to have to cut that slightly further because, yeah, I've mucked this one up for some reason. Anyway, they're very forgiving. You can just just go back in and uh, alter them slightly. So, yeah, you don't have to worry too much. So, like that, and oops, I'll just keep that because he <clears throat> heaven forbid that I would actually just throw that scrap away. And then we can have our flat kind of like right up here now. So we've got quite a tall one, like that. I just bone folder that down, like that. Okay, and we will just then, again, do this as a slight curve. There, and this side. Like that. And then again, we're just going to take this down kind of like this, squish it, you know, together. I mean, I'm not squishing it in. I don't want to fold it. But just so as I've got it, you know, that I can do it sort of semi-symmetrical. I say semi-symmetrical because mm, I'm not really doing very well at doing anything, to be honest, today. So I won't claim it to be symmetrical, but at least we've got a starting point going to obviously trim that up and tidy that up so yeah let's glue this in now so just going to bone fold that down so it's a little bit better a little bit better squished in and then we're going to just take the glue along here glue along here press that in glue along for my flap at the bottom like that and press that down okay like 
like that. And then I'm just going to quickly tidy this up because, wow, what a mess. There. Oops. You can probably see it better from this side, to be honest. There we go. Right. And that's my flap. So, obviously, as you can see, you know, it's much taller. So, you know, just vary them according to the paper that you've got. So if you've got, you know, smaller paper, you could make these in a small size. I mean, personally, I'm not great at doing small, so I'm not sure how brilliant mine would turn out. It's got to be said. But I'm sure you could make these in titchy size. Um, yeah, I mean, I would personally find them very, very fiddly. And then you may want to go for a smaller circle. Um, maybe like a half inch circle or something like that if your piece was very small because otherwise the circle is going to kind of swamp your piece. Um, but yeah, I think you could probably make them quite small, to be honest. I would say we'd attempt one, but to be honest, <laughs> not sure that I'm up to the job, especially as I seem to be in really clumsy mode today. Oh, just another one of those terrible clumsy, clumsy modes. Honestly, I seem to have those clumsy modes all the time, but... Okay like that so yeah I mean they're actually quite quick aren't they but they are just quite fiddly so oops but once you know once you kind of got the hang of them you know they're not too too bad so like that now again obviously it's quite a long one so you might want to have it you know I don't know further down you might want it up there but just play around you know see how you think it looks best so again, let me just kind of hold that down with my scissors. I will just glue the top one on. Like that. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm going to put it about there. Okay. Might have a different colour string for this one. Um, yeah, I think I'll have a different colour string just because I feel like that's maybe not complementing that to the best. Um, oh, look, I actually have some lilac. How handy was that? Very, very handy. I've been so lucky because I've received, um, you know, quite a bit of twine in Happy Mails. And uh, yeah, so it's really great because I've got a really good selection of colours now. And I do love the twine. I always just used to use string, which I do still use from time to time. Um, but yeah, the twine is slightly thinner. This is the string. And you can see, I mean, the twine is, you know, considerably thinner, isn't it? But I mean, the string does work fine too. So, and that's just, you know, like regular string that you'd get maybe at the post office or something. Okay can't remember which way I've tied this now so I'm just hazarding I guess go under with that it's not the end of the world it's not really going to be coming undone to be perfectly honest okay and then we're going to just snip that down there so I'm just going to show you how this looks on the ones that I bought they went like that so instead of doing like a figure of eight they just went straight like that which actually now I'm putting this I kind of think mm, perhaps I perhaps I like that best actually I've never ever wound them that way round before and I'm literally only you know I got the idea just from the ones that I bought when they arrived they were all like that and I thought oh look at those you know why haven't they done that figure of eight thing um yeah actually maybe that looks quite nice so yeah, just play around with how you like it. And to be honest, just because you do it one way on one thing, you can just vary it on, on other ones, can't you? So, right, that's that one. Okay, let's just carry on. So, um, yeah, okay. This is my English Country Garden papers. So I think I'll definitely want to do one in those. Okay, I might cut this one down. Like that, I think. So yeah, let's just kind of relax now, have a nice time, have a catch up, see what everyone's been up to. 
So I hope that you've all had a good week since since my last mass make. Hope everything's going well for everybody. In the last mass making session, um, the kids were all poorly with coronavirus. So just to assure you all, touch wood, we are all recovered now. And yeah, we're all feeling fine now. So I'm just wondering whether I could have this sideways on because I'm thinking this way, I'm not going to get so many of the flowers on show. So yeah, although it sounds slightly strange having it sideways, I might just be able to get more, more flowers visible by doing that, I think. So I might, yeah, I might do that. Um, yeah, so thankfully everybody seems to have recovered fine. Everyone's doing well, so yeah, touch wood, we're all, we're all fine. Um, uh, you know, did kind of those coronavirus tests ourselves every couple of days. So, uh, I can't really remember where we were at on my last video. We must have done those PCR tests and, you know, had the official results and all that. And we were self-isolating, I think. So, yeah, we continued to do those lateral flow tests like every couple of days to see you know, see whether the virus was still there. Um, I mean, the symptoms, you know, luckily being kids, they, you know, they did fight it off pretty quick. So, I mean, they were only really poorly for like a couple of days. I think my middle son, he might have been poorly for about four days, but not, not anything too bad. So we were very, very, very lucky. Um, yeah, I, I don't know really whether I had it. I think I've said this before i didn't have one of those official tests i just did the lateral flows still not really convinced that i did it quite right because um, i found it really quite horrible and didn't want to poke the thing down my throat too far so but i've done a couple of the tests and touch wood they came out negative so whether or not i was doing the test right who knows but touch wood you know i i came out negative anyway so that's all fine um right just deciding do i want to cut this about here i think yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so touch wood, I, you know, I'm feeling fine. I felt a little bit funny. I mean, I had a bit of a headache and a bit of a sore throat and things like that at times. Whether or not I had, you know, a very mild sort of version of the virus, I don't really know. I mean, like I say, I have been double jabbed. Um, so, I mean, hopefully that's the jab kind of doing its job. So... Yeah, hopefully that's why I kind of only experienced, if at all, very mild symptoms. Um, yeah, so who knows, to be honest. But anyway, touch wood, it's all fine. And, you know, everyone's now kind of feeling fine, which is, you know, awesome. And, you know, we feel very lucky to have hopefully, you know, got over the worst of it pretty, pretty easily. Because, I mean, obviously not everybody does. So, yeah, I don't want to kind of shrug it off and, you know, um, what's the word, make light of it, you know, because obviously just because we were very lucky doesn't mean that everybody's, you know, so lucky. So, yeah, but we feel, you know, we feel fine now. So, yeah, that was that. Um, also, when I spoke last week, we were having problems with our fridge freezer. So we had kind of defrosted it and we were like mm, out of food, which was a bit of a nightmare. Um then my son, my eldest son, when he was feeling fine, which actually, to be honest, he was pretty much feeling fine all the time. Um, when it came time to turn like the fridge freezer back on, which I don't know whether we had reached that point. I think perhaps we had reached that point last week. Anyway, we then discovered it was still freezing the food. The fridge was still freezing the food. So how annoying was that? Because obviously I'd already paid for a repair on the fridge freezer. But it had been making a noise from the freezer. So, you know, technically he had fixed that noise. The noise had gone. But equally, the fridge was still freezing the food. So, I mean, you know, ultimately, <laughs> that was kind of the worst problem. Because actually the noise, aside from being irritating, it wasn't really spoiling food or anything like that. Anyway, oops, I've just noticed how... Have I just folded that completely crooked, do you think? Or... Hmm, I think I did. Let's just fold that down a bit more. Or fold fold it up a bit more here, actually. Yeah, so um, it was a bit annoying. And we then thought, oh, this is, you know, how annoying. We've now paid for the repair. 
and now we still need a new flipping fridge which how annoying is that anyway then um my eldest son i'm in touch with he's very very capable so he kind of looked at the fridge and he's done like what he would call like a, a temporary repair like a kind of bodge job so he discovered that there's like this little door thing in between the fridge and the freezer which obviously allows more cold in if the fridge seems to be getting too hot and you know vice versa so kind of like closes the the door when the fridge feels very cold so as to not let more cold in if that makes sense so yeah he um discovered that and you know so he was kind of monitoring that with the whole closing of the door opening of the door closing <laughs> closing and opening um and touch wood i mean i don't even like to say it to be honest but touch wood let's just say we're getting by using that method and that's fine that's working perfectly for um for us for the time being so you know who cares it's not really a big deal to have to kind of just every now and then open or close the flap a little bit more is it so yeah it's all good and what a clever boy I you know he's so helpful to be honest so yeah I was really really thrilled then um what's happened since then well nothing really so yeah I've um obviously you know filled some bits into the fridge um what else what else what else Oh, so we've obviously stopped now our self-isolation. So we have been to the beach a couple of times, which has been lovely. Um, what else? Oh, our hot tub. I nearly forgot. Yeah. So our hot tub arrived. That was the other big news. Yes. So I'd ordered a hot tub, um, you know, for, for me and the children, basically, because, you know, we've been having a rubbish year and, you know, I just wanted to do something nice and fun for the kids mainly. Um, you know, because obviously we won't really be having much of a holiday. We're kind of doing the Wales thing, but, you know, hopefully we are anyway, providing there's no coronavirus -y things happen, you know, because, I mean, I guess the owners of the Airbnb that we've booked, you know, they could always end up getting coronavirus and have to cancel. Sorry, I've just dropped a bit on the floor. Um, you know, but all being well, we will be doing that for our holiday. But, yeah, I just wanted to do something nice for the children. So, um ordered a hot tub and I did say last week I mean I'm not really a hot tub kind of person to be honest and so I thought oh well, I'm barely going to go in it but hey ho you know that's fine oh my goodness I love it <laughs> I've been in it lots of times um since it's arrived it's so fun it's yeah my daughter and I we had such a fun time in it together um I mean, she's very confident in the water and she loves like, going underwater and, you know, all this stuff. I mean, I'm pathetic when it comes to water. I don't like getting splashed. I certainly don't like putting my face underwater or anything like that. In fact, I don't put my face underwater. So, yeah, I'm kind of pathetic, but <laughs> my daughter is not pathetic. She loves it. But even being pathetic, I have had such a nice time going in it. And um, her and I just had, you know, a really, really fun, lovely time. So, yeah, really going um, great guns with that. Sorry, I'm just just seeing whether I might like to have red twine. Let me just ink this up and see. Um, yeah, we've had really good fun in it. Um, then my middle son and I, we had quite, <laughs> quite a funny evening kind of playing around in there. Um, I mean, we're still kind of getting to grips with using it, to be honest. I mean, so far... I'm not sure that we have the temperature set quite right. I mean, it was very, very hot when it first arrived. So obviously, I mean, the the weather, not the hot tub. The weather was very, very hot. And so we kind of thought, oh, we need it as a cold tub. Well, then, of course, what happens is as soon as the evening comes, actually, then it's quite cold in, the, you know, not necessarily cold in there, but you get cold, you know, from like as soon as your shoulders kind of poke out of it and things like that. So you know we then were trying to get the temperature up well of course it takes a lot longer to heat up than you kind of first think so we're still playing around with getting the heat quite right and you know then what happens is we kind of go off to bed you know having turned the temperature up and then by the morning it's you know like at the hottest which i think is like 40 degrees 
And of course, then the next morning is when the weather's hottest. Also, 40 degrees. No, it's not 40 degrees. That was just complete exaggeration. But you know, the weather's hottest. And so then what's happened is the tub is then too hot to go in, um, you know, during the day. So then we're trying to cool the temperature down. So yeah, we need to kind of um, perfect the whole temperature thing. But you know, oh look, I'm doing that straight thing again. I'm quite liking that straight thing to be honest, yeah. Quite, quite liking that. So how gorgeous does that look? I just love that one. Really, really love that one. And obviously, you know, these don't have to be glued into a journal. You could paper clip these on, tuck them in, you know, move them around. So completely up to you. Right, what's the time? Let me see. Oh, 41 minutes. Okay, 41 minutes. So perhaps we should just decorate one. I'm not sure I've got time to kind of make another one and decorate. So, oh gosh, I've been very rubbish. I've only made four. <laughs> That's just pathetic, isn't it? Yep. Oh, well, right. Let's go for this one. Let's just do the, the long one. Um, yeah, so we need to kind of perfect the, you know, the art of getting the temperature right. But aside from that, we have been really having a fun time. So it's, yeah, just what the doctor ordered. You know, really, really fun. And yeah, everyone's loving it. So um, yeah, we've all really thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, um, so far money well spent so um definitely definitely you know even even if you're not really a hot tub kind of person you know they are really really super fun um then what else have we been doing well i mean to be honest that's been the main the main thing is obviously the hot tub it's been the main event and yeah the beach a couple of times and that's it really um right let's have a look and see got one of my bows here and i think it might be quite nice okay finished watching that rude program that i was watching last week so yep um <laughs> yeah i felt embarrassed to even talk about it but it was the one on Netflix that was trending here in the UK and somebody then informed me it was, I think she said number eight or number nine in the US. This was last week. I don't know where it is now. It might be out the charts even. Um, but yeah, it was um, very rude, very racy, very rude. Um, so I finished watching that. I don't think I've really started anything else, to be honest, because, you know, we've kind of been in the garden quite a bit and things like that. So, yeah, not really started anything else. Um, what else have we been doing? That's pretty much it, to be honest. Just, yeah, just not really doing anything, anything worth talking about. But, yeah... Oh, and I also, I'd like to say massive thank you because so many of you have contributed on my Buy Me A Coffee and I can't tell you how grateful I am. Just, yeah, blows me away how absolutely kind and lovely that you all are. So thank you so, so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. Actually, I don't think I want to have that. Um, just, I'm just... Uh, scour scouring scouring on my desk to see what I've got that I could put on here you know that might be that might be just right mm. I've got that I mean that's quite nice isn't it is it weird having it to the side like that I'm not sure oh and obviously it is school holidays now I didn't say that yeah so it's school holidays now so of course you know my daughter and my um middle son they're now home from school so yeah I would you know obviously be still doing videos all the time I haven't managed to get as many filmed as I would have liked. So I'm touching wood. I'm still going to be, you know, my usual schedule. But I just have to kind of see how it goes. But I'm going to hopefully do, yeah, quite a bit of filming over the next couple of days. To 
you know get a little bit ahead of the game before our holiday um if nothing else so yeah we'll kind of just see how it goes but yeah and my daughter's just come up to join me up here haven't you darling you've been having a nice time downstairs sweetie so she's been just in bed on her tablet and um yep she's just come up she's been having breakfast in bed yeah very strange she's been having crackers crackers and butter for her breakfast um that seems to be what she's liking at the moment i don't know whether that's since she's had coronavirus actually maybe that's kind of left her wanting strange breakfast what do you think do you think it's since then she's just looking at me like i've gone mad um yeah I'm still trying to have my smoothies and be like really, really healthy. So I've just had my, my green smoothie, which was yummy. Do we think that's like an overdose of purple on there or is it okay? Or perhaps I could have that up there. Are you coming to give me your opinion? Tell me what you think, yeah? You like it, yeah? Let's go for that then. Okie dokie. And then this afternoon, we're meeting up with my friend, um, mum from the school, who, you know, my daughter's friends with her, her little girl. And, um, yeah, I'm obviously friends with her mum. So, yeah, we're meeting up with them, hopefully at the park, although I have to say... Yesterday was such foul weather. It just rained and rained and rained and rained. Like really, really proper rained the whole day. Um, oh, and thunder and lightning too. So um, <laughs> yeah, we're hopefully going to the park. I don't think it's supposed to be like that at all today. But just in case, you know, there is a possibility we won't be doing that. But yeah, that's the plan at the moment is to to meet them at the park but I mean if you know if we can't go to the park if suddenly it starts chucking it down or anything then obviously we will go to um you know they can come to our house instead so yeah you know you don't have to go out do you so they can come just to our house and you know that's all fine too and obviously it would be better to go to the park because of course otherwise the girls you know they still get a little bit bored if you're inside don't they but Obviously, no one wants to go to the park if it's not very nice weather. So we will just see, see how it is. I just nearly caught a fly. You nearly caught a fly? I doubt it. Oh, that's very strange. Okay, let's just pop that down. Is your brother still asleep? I bet he is. I bet he is. Okay. Oh, and the other thing is, um, I know I mentioned this the other day or, you know, a few weeks ago. So we've got this new gym now where we live, which, oh my goodness, so thrilled to have this gym. And it's super cheap, you know, like really, really good value, which previously our gym was kind of like the, you know, the local kind of like, you know, local authority one gym. And it was um, three times the price of this new gym. So I can't tell you how much we are loving that. I really missed it while we were obviously in self-isolation and unable to go. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. And my middle son, who I think I said before, you know, he did not want to go at all at first. And he's like, no, 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 you know, refusing to go. He joined and he absolutely loves it. He, of course, obviously as well, wasn't able to go during our self-isolation. He's missed it so much. You know, both of both of us, we've missed it so much. So we are back there now, you know, with a vengeance. I mean, obviously, yeah, we're not really going to get that much unless, like, my other son's here to be able to look after my daughter. But, um, yeah, we're really, really loving going there. It's just so nice. It's... I mean, I am very lazy and drive there. When my son goes, he, you know, my middle son, he often bikes there. So he's 
much more healthy than me. I mean, obviously he can't drive, so it's not like he's got an option of driving, but you know, he's not kind of asking me for a lift. In fact, the opposite, he says he likes to bike there. I guess because he's got, like having his warm up on his way to the gym, but yeah, I'm super lazy. I mean, I could bike there, but no, I drive. But it's literally like five minutes drive from our house, which is fantastic. So yeah, really, really, really loving it. Right, there we go. And I should just wrap that round there. I don't know why this keeps getting, wanting to go under that bottom circle. There we go. That's better. Is it? Oh, there we go. And like that. Yay! So there we have it. I love that tall one, I have to say. Really, really, really like that tall one. And, you know, a bit like all those other revisits that we've done so far. I mean, obviously, we're only up to week four, but I can't tell you how much I'm really enjoying the revisits. I thought they were going to be really dull kind of revisiting things. But having said that, I mean, we do things, repeat things quite often, don't we? Um, but this is really handy because, like I said before, you forget, you know, what things that you really like. And, yeah, I really, really love using these, um, you know, uh, policy envelopes. And I very rarely do anymore, just because we get out of the habit and we've obviously discovered other things since, you know, since kind of doing junk journals and things. But I mean, I really love them. Yeah, love this tall one. So if I were using this in a journal, if, uh, you know, as I said, you could use this as a floating piece, in which case, of course, I would ink the back. Um, not necessarily decorate the back, but ink the back for it to be floating. Or I would use this in a in a journal page. For me, I would use the top, uh, the tall one. I would glue it on three sides and have it as a side loading tuck spot. And then you've got obviously inside the coin envelope to have as, or the po policy envelope to have as a pocket. Um, that's how that would look on the page. And then these are the smaller ones that we've done like this. So just depending really on the size of them, you know, I would even maybe do it just as a tuck spot. So glue it on two sides and it would just be there. Tuck things in behind. And then again, you've got the, you know, the wind round and the envelope inside. You know, just kind of, yeah, sort of depending on the size of them, really. Whether I would glue them in three sides and glue them down. You know, depending on perhaps how wide they are. You could even do them on those three and have them as a top loading pocket. Um, yeah, kind of just vary them to you know to suit your your project really and obviously the papers that you've got left so i hope that you like them really 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 love them and yeah definitely i'm going to make some more of those so thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a fantastic week and i will see you guys tomorrow thanks then stay safe everyone bye